What is up you guys? It's your girl Nicole Faye and welcome back to another Juicy Fat video. As you guys can see by the title, you guys are all showering wrong, okay? I'm sorry to break it to you, but everyone is showering wrong, okay? These 10 steps that I'm about to give you are some steps that you've heard before, but showering is much more than just washing your ass right, all right? Okay, okay. Like I said, I have 10 steps to give you guys, 10 steps on mistakes that you might be making to make your shower routine better. So definitely listen up because like I said, these are some tips that you've heard before, but some of these tips I have not heard of and they even shocked me. So let's go ahead and get into tip number one. So tip number one is changing your shower head. I know you have heard about this before, but if you haven't, girl, you are missing out on the best shower routine experience of your life, okay? I changed my shower head from my old regular base shower head to a Jolie one. I have tremendously felt a difference in the way my shower routine is, okay? Like, I feel like I'm in a spa in my own home, all right? I changed it about six, seven months ago. The Jolie shower head is basically a shower head that's supposed to have like much cleaner water to make your skin softer and better for your hair. And I love that I changed my shower head. I don't know why the f I didn't do that sooner, okay? Please, 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 if you want to have a greater experience experience with your shower routine, change your shower head. Like there's so many different options you can get at like Home Depot, Walmart with different shower heads that like give you like a spy experience or that are like really big to like come down on the top of your head or just like be like a jacuzzi thing. There's so many different options of shower heads that you can get. There is no excuse why you still have your basic shower head, okay? Please listen to me if you don't listen to any other of these tips. Get you a new shower head and thank me later. The second tip is your water is way too hot in the shower and you're showering way too long. That one was a shocker for me because one thing I'm a sucker for is a good long hot shower, okay? Especially at night before I go to bed. It literally puts me to sleep like I'm a newborn baby, okay? But yes, the water being too hot and you showering too long is stripping the natural oils that is on your body from the soap and stuff you use. Have you ever noticed like when you get out a really, really hot shower, especially if you're a girl, I always hear jokes like girls take the hottest fucking showers and it's true because it feels so good. But anyway, when you get out a hot shower, especially if you've been in the shower for so long, your skin feels so dry. And I have noticed that my skin does that. Like after I get out a very hot, long shower, my skin is like stripped dry. So that that is definitely one thing that I have been changing, trying my best to change in my routine because I am a sucker for a long hot shower. But your shower shouldn't last any longer than like 20 minutes at the max. Get in there, you know, just let the water run all over you, do your dances, do your singing, and then you get in there, scrub, scrub, and then you get out, okay? Get out, time is money, get out, okay? The water bill is high because the water is too hot and you're in there too long, okay? I bet you get out the shower quickly, you to be able to go down. Yeah. <laughs> All right now. But yes, definitely stop taking too long and too hot of showers because it's really stripping the natural oils that you get from the soaps and stuff you use that is really good for your skin and what your skin needs for moisture. Tip number three is not regularly switching your washcloths, okay? Now, if you are not using a washcloth like at all, Get off my channel right now. Leave, I don't wanna hear the excuses, go. You should be using a rag, okay? But you should not be using a rag longer than four or five days, okay? Rags tend to carry a lot of bacteria, especially with each wash. So make sure you're regularly switching out your rags so you do not carry that old bacteria onto your body because you wanna be clean and you wanna look good, all right? And you wanna smell good. That rag, throw it out, all right? I know you're watching this video right now and that rag that's in the bathroom has been in there for almost a week. Get in there right now and get that rag and throw it away right now. Then come back to this video. Tip number four is the tip that has really helped me ever since I've started doing this tip of my back acne, which is you're not rinsing off properly because your hair conditioners and just the shampoos and stuff you use in your hair and the different oils you stuff and use on your body while you're in the shower clogs your pores. So making sure you're rinsing off thoroughly before you get out is essential, okay? Especially after you get done conditioning your hair, okay? I always like wash my hair and condition my hair before I even wash my body. And now I don't do that anymore, okay? Okay, so I'll wash my hair, you know, wash, 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 and then I'll put the conditioner in and I'll let the conditioner just sit in my hair before I rinse my body because I wanna wash the conditioner out before I wash off my body because while I'm washing off my body, I'm also washing off the excess conditioner that has fell onto my back and all over my body. And it has really made a difference with my back and chest acne because I have really bad back and chest acne because I'm just still going through 
in puberty. Yeah, I know. But yeah, that has really made a difference in my routine. Just like not washing up right before I take the conditioner out. Trust me, okay? If you have back and chest acne, definitely try that out because it has really helped me. But just in general, just make sure you're washing your body thoroughly, even if you don't wash your hair off, just to make sure that your body is clean before you get out. Number five is a weird tip, okay? Getting out the shower while your skin is still damp and putting lotion on. Now, why the f would you put lotion on your skin while your skin is damp? You wanna know why? They say that the moisture from the lotion, your skin absorbs the moisture from the, bleh, Lord. Your skin absorbs the lotion while your body is damp. What the f am I trying to say? The lotion absorbs better into the skin when the skin is wet. That is what I'm trying to say. Jesus, that, that was a twin twister, okay? I've heard of that before, but I don't do that because as soon as I get out the shower, I'm freezing and I want to dry off, okay? But before you dry off and get so eager, don't completely dry off your body. Just pat your body down with your towel and then go ahead and immediately put on your lotion, okay? I know we all hate putting on lotion after we get out the shower, okay? Especially if you're in a rush or you just really don't feel like it, okay? You just want to get in the shower and just get in the bed. I know, but your body needs the moisture, okay? Put some lotion on, okay? Or invest in you some spray lotion, okay? I have some spray lotion that's from the Aquaphor brand that I just bought. It's so easy, okay? As soon as I get out the shower, off to bed. I don't even have to rub it in, just spray it all over you and then you're done. Make sure you start putting on lotion on damp skin so your body can absorb the lotion better. Tip number six is chill on the antibacterial soap, okay? Put it down, all right? Chill on it, all right? You are taking away all the good bacteria that your skin needs as well, okay? We all have good and bad bacteria that balance our skin pH balances out. So using too much antibacterial soap is killing the good bacteria and you do not want that, okay? Absolutely not. Just just like how your pH levels in your hoo-ha, hoo to mama area needs to be balanced and they say stay away from the feminine stuff because you don't want to get rid of the bad. Yeah, same thing for your skin, all right? Same thing for your skin. Stay away from the antibacterial soaps. That one really shocked me as well because I love using antibacterial soaps on like my underarm areas to make sure that I get, you know, yesterday's deodorants off under my underarms. But after I learned that tip, I was like, okay, I need to chill on antibacterial soap because I've noticed that my underarms are extremely dry after I use it. Even though I go in with like my oils and stuff and my ingrown oils to put under my arms, but it does strip my skin under my arms. So maybe I should put it down. Yeah, maybe I should put it, put it down. Put the anti, put the dowel away. So tip number seven is crucial, okay? I think everyone thinks of their shower routine as like a joke and they don't really take it as how you would take your skin face routine serious. You need to take your body routine serious. Instead of only buying body washes that only make you smell good and that's the only thing they do because they the bottle just looks cute and you want to smell like roses even though I don't have a problem with that because I understand you girl. But you need to be invested in body washes and buying body washes that cater to your skin needs. Like for example, I have body acne. So all of my my body products and my shower products cannot just be filled of just roses and flowers just so I can smell good. No, I need some products in there that also does cater to my skin needs and problems, all right? So I have my acne soap and my acne body wash that I like to use before I put on my good smelling stuff. So I like to double cleanse. If you are active, you know, watcher of my channel, you know how much I would get you about you not double cleansing, okay? But not just double cleansing with two body soaps that smell good. You first cleanse with one that caters to your skin needs, then you go in with whatever one that you want to smell like that day and smell good. Investing in body washes that help with your skin needs, like if you have eczema, very dry skin, very sensitive skin, acne prone skin, get you a body wash that is really, really going to help that instead of always just getting body washes that smell good. That's not the purpose of a shower routine. Just like you take your face care routine serious, you need to take a shower routine body care serious, all right? Thank me later. Okay, so tip number eight, I know is a tip that most of us do not do, okay? Especially I don't. I was very surprised when I found out about this tip, which is while you're in the shower, running your bathroom fan to help with the humidity of the bathroom. I never mm -hmm. do that. First of all, I hate when the bathroom fan is on because it is so loud and distracting. And when I'm in the shower, I just want peace and quiet. And I just want to hear my singing, horrible, disgruntled reptile voice of me singing a song that's in my head that cannot stop playing. But yes, running your bathroom fan is so good for the humidity that's in the bathroom. It really can create mold and bacteria on your ceilings or mess up your drywall. I also heard as well, if like your bathroom is connected to your closet, it could also really mess up your clothes as well. So make sure you have the bathroom fan going, you know, it doesn't have to 
be every time. You can be bad sometimes, but majority of the time, make sure it's running or at least keep the door open, all right? Don't just have air, you know, you just in this hot, closed space in the bathroom just taking this scorching hot shower and you get out and you can't even see you can literally write your name on the mirror no okay water is too hot and you need your fan going okay just try it we're all gonna try it okay we're all challenging each other by watching this video to try it okay because we do not want mold and bacteria and to ruin our clothes in our closet okay number nine is a tip that i learned a while ago that i always make sure i keep up with is changing your shower lining in your shower unless you have a glass shower then you don't need to to worry about that but if you have a regular shower and tub and you have a curtain you need to make sure you change your shower lining okay it also holds mold and bacteria and things of that nature and it's just really not good to inhale while you're in the shower so just making sure you're keeping up with changing your shower lining is really really good and helpful for the benefits of your shower routine they also have like shower linings at the store that like are like Clorox and stuff like that or that don't have the toxic plastic stuff in it and stuff so I always make sure when I get my shower linings that I look out for things like like that so it can help my shower lining stay a little bit last a little bit longer but definitely change your shower lining i learned that a a while ago and it really does help. Tip number 10 is stop leaving your razors in the shower because the water makes it rust quicker. Look, I know leaving your razor in the shower is much more convenient. You know, it's just literally right there when you need to hurry up and shave really quickly instead of leaving it out the shower and having to step out the shower dripping wet to get a razor. Trust me, I know the pain. If you have a good razor that you've paid like $15 for and that is really durable, you want it to last, stop leaving it in the shower, okay? If you bought those dollar razors that you just used once you could throw away, like who cares if you leave that in the shower? First of all, you're supposed to dispose of those anyway, but if you bought a really good razor and you want your stuff to last and you notice you've been having problems with your razors rusting quickly, it's because you're leaving them in in the shower okay leave them next to I don't know don't put them in the shower I don't know you're gonna have to get out dripping wet and get your razor <laughs> life is hard no excuses who would ever think that there are multiple shower mistakes that you can make and there's things that you can do to make your shower routine better like when I was growing up the only thing my mother taught me about showering was to make sure that I wash my whole body correctly and that was pretty much it okay but now that I'm getting older I really do take like my self-care routines like really serious so it was like really interesting to learn like different things that I could do to even make my shower routine better so I hope I give you guys some good pointers and some good tips on how to improve your shower routine and if these are tips that you already know i hope i gave you awesome some good tips to how to make things better so i love you guys thank you guys so much for watching today's video leave me some comments down below on some shower tips that you have that you like to do to help your shower routine and just some things that you didn't know that i told you guys i love you guys so much thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next video bye